You're welcome to this preview of Ephesians 2, 1 through 10, employing the New English translation of 2019 with variant readings from the 5th century CE and earlier. Our working outline of the Epistle to the Ephesians includes these nine sections. In this session, we're dealing with section 4 on teaching. The structure of chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, includes two concession statements, although you were dead in sins, although we were dead in transgressions. Then the main clause, God's three actions, God, rich in mercy, livened, raised, and seated us. His purpose was to show his grace, followed by an explanation, you have been saved by grace through faith, and this is God's gift, so that no one can boast. The reason for which is that we are his work, created for good works. If you are in a Bible study group, have someone read aloud verses 1 and 2. Then ask everyone for their observations and any queries they wish to pose about the text. Comment that the term sins is a grammatical feminine noun, translated in which, the term for world, the cosmos in Greek, refers to organized societies and cultures. The term translated path is the common Greek aeon, meaning the present age of time. Mention of a ruler and his domain relates to the phrase rule and authority in chapter 1. The term energize is translated exercised in chapter 1. The spirit that is now energizing the sons of disobedience relates to beliefs and discussions that were common amongst Jews of the first century CE. Dead Sea Scroll IQM reads, Today is his appointed time to subdue and to humiliate the prince of the realm of wickedness. He will send eternal support to the company of his redeemed by the power of the majestic angel of the authority of Michael. In the New Testament, this is the authority of the Lord Jesus. Does God operate by democracy? What is included in the unseen realm? Well, certainly the God of the Bible, Yahweh, surrounded by his divine counsel, including seraphs, messengers, but also the serpent, the devil, the sons of El, called watchers, cosmocrats, even termed gods, princes, rulers, powers, authorities, dominions, shades, and ghosts. Whereas in the seen realm, we also operate under the powers and authorities of emperors, bankers, kings, parliaments, governors, administrators, mafioso, judges, mayors, chief, constables, enforcers, CEOs, bosses, empires, managers, and you know the rest. The phrase, you formerly lived, is translated walked in verse 10, referring both to our old and our new forms of moral conduct. You might pose this query for discussion. Describe the secret behavior of those who remain outside of Christ and their spiritual condition without exposing dirty details. And the pronouns you and we seem a rhetorical way of expressing inclusion, possibly referring to you Gentiles and we Jews. Important for the interpretation of this complex text in Greek is recognizing the role of inflections or the endings of nouns, articles, adjectives, pronouns, and participles for each has several endings indicating gender. Every noun in Greek is either masculine, feminine, or neuter. Its number, 
whether singular or plural, and its case, nominative case used for subjects of sentences, genitives translated of in English, the date of case, meaning to, for, in, or by, and the accusative case used of direct objects of verbs and in other ways. Any of these that are related to a same person, place, or thing must agree in gender, number, and case. For example, in the English sentence, the strong lifting man who did whatever, all five words must have a masculine singular nominative inflection or ending. The second concession is in verse 3. Have someone read this aloud. The relative pronoun which corresponds with the inflection of the noun transgression, thereby allowing us to translate in which transgression we lived. Thus the alternative we formerly lived. You might discuss together what does our flesh desire and what does our mind desire? And then, who were once just as lost as the rest? And what kind of God would ever show wrath? Is the God of the Bible some kind of an angry demon? And the phrase, children of wrath, does this refer to angry children or to objects of the divine wrath? You do not have to be able to read this Greek text, but note the colored words. The top phrase in blue translates, you being dead, which is in parallel with the distant phrase, we being dead. Both phrases in the accusative case, meaning although you were dead, although we were dead. The inflections in red, are translated in our text, the sins in which you walked or lived, whereas the inflections in green also relate to each other, the transgressions in which we all used to live. Verse 4 contains the main clause introducing three divine actions. Have someone read this verse aloud. After they have posed their queries and made their observations, then ask, what does mercy do? Mercy meets needs. What does love do? Love treats others as one wishes to be loved. And in what sense were we dead while our bodies are still alive? And in what sense are we alive as we were not formerly? And then, what does grace do? Grace saves even those who do not merit it. This may be a good time to present a brief theology of death and life consisting of these nine points. In Adam, or because we are descended from Adam, our body is destined to die. We are born or aborted, spiritually alive, without sin. However, all humans deliberately sin and so incur spiritual death, separation from God. Fourthly, upon death of the body, the dead descend conscious into Sheol, the place of the dead, sometimes called the underworld. Fifthly, if we trust in Christ, then we become spiritually alive, so that upon death of the body, the living go to be with Christ. However, when Christ shall return, he will bring with him the living. He will then raise our body back to life. Thus we will remain with the Lord forever in our glorified body. Now the purpose clause. Have someone read aloud verses 6 and 7. Note that in Greek, the aorist tense used for these verbs has no time, so these may not be 
past tenses, so translate them with whatever time makes sense in your language. So, when did, does, or will God make us alive, raise us, and seat us with Christ? And to whom does God demonstrate his grace? The text now offers explanations for what has just been asserted. Read verses 8 and 9. Note that Greek has no adjective for saved, so it uses a participle, literally, or having been and remaining saved. The term saved, according to Greek-English lexicons, means to rescue from danger, disease, or death, bringing out safely, preserving in good condition. So, discuss together. We are saved from what? And we are saved unto what? After a discussion, then offer this slide. In the Bible, there are statements to the effect that in the past, we were saved and we have been saved with lasting results. In the present time, we are saved and we are being saved. It's an ongoing work. And regarding the future, we will be saved and we will have been saved. Saved from what? Well, dangers, disease, evil desires, the devil, his demons, from drug addiction, from wicked deeds, from death, and from everlasting damnation. And we are saved unto, well, holy living, good deeds, better health, more joyful thoughts, eventual resurrection, and everlasting life. The reason we are saved not by our works is revealed in verse 10. Have someone read this aloud. Note that the phrase, his work, the Greek term is poema, the source of our European word, poem, used in Greek Christian literature only of the works of divine creation. Whereas the term good works is ergon, expended energy. These things are excellent and profitable for people, Paul said to Titus, and therefore help cases of urgent need. After discussing others' queries, you might ask, what good work would you like to do the rest of your years of strength? If you ask God to keep you busy in his kingdom, he will do so. So, here's something you can pray. Lord Jesus, please keep me busy for your kingdom the rest of my time on earth. To conclude your discussion, ask those who wish to share what is one truth insight, belief, or action that you learned from Ephesians 2, 1 through 10 this week. As an assignment for next time, ask everyone to read a chapter of Ephesians each day in versions that they trust, and then to study Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 through 22, preparing comments and queries to share in your next discussion.